Hi everybody, welcome back to another episode of our Dungeon Boss Hero Spotlight. Tonight we are taking a look at the brand new nature hero called Drac the Warlord. He is going to be released tomorrow afternoon as part of a uh, event for this particular couple of weeks, I think. I don't know what the exact holiday is. It's just that time of year. It's the spring and uh, it's time for a new hero, another um, event. So those of us uh, who are fortunate enough, uh, if you want to call it fortunate enough, to be VIP 10, or maybe those of us who are suckers enough to have invested enough money into this game and are VIP 10, we have early access to this guy. So we're going to take a quick look at him tonight. We're going to do an unboxing. We're not going to do any type of PvP tonight because I'm going to wait until after I get a few tokens with him, and then we'll um, test him out in a couple of weeks probably with um, some new teams that uh, come out and see how he works. Uh, so for tonight, we're going to look at uh, unboxing. We're going to look at how much it costs him to ascend. That's going to be a lot of uh, the questions for a lot of people is what sort of abilities does he have and how expensive is he going to be to ascend. So let's get out to my mail here. I do have a mail waiting from uh, devs, basically saying early access. It is unopened, so we're getting that uh, fresh new mail smell here on our end. There we go, 10 tokens, being VIP, here's our 10 tokens, blah, 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 24 hours before everybody else. Technically, it's nighttime here for me, so I've been letting this sit for just over five hours now. So I've actually been uh, kinda kind of really sitting on this one. I've been wanting to, uh, to get in there, but I uh, haven't had a chance to yet. Now, before I go any further, uh, I just want to point this out uh, early and uh, help you guys out in terms of if you like this guy, so after we take a look at it and he's like, you know what, this guy is a must have, eventually some people are going to be uh, tempted to spend some money on him. Let me make this very perfectly clear. This is going to be a Winterfest type event and most people are going to think in order to really get um, tokens for this guy, they're going to have to buy golden keys. Be very, 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 and I repeat, very wary about just blatantly spending money on gold keys. So the last two events that came around, when people did the math on it, they would buy golden keys. They ended up having to buy three iterations of gold key packages that amounted to $150. So you're paying $150 to basically get a guaranteed six star. Do not do that. Um, if you go back to my Gortus video, when I first uh, purchased Gortus, there was a, uh, a deal package in the shop for 280 Gortus tokens for $99 or $99.99. So I spent $100 and then through some crafty planning through the rest of the doors, I was able to get the rest of the tokens and had a six star Gortus. Um, when everybody else paid 150, I only paid 100 for the same thing. So if you are, if your goal is to get a six-star drac, check the check the store, see if there's a 280 token package, and then when the doors come around, don't open them right away. Do not be foolish with the doors. Wait for the first 14 days. I know it's hard to be patient that way, but be patient. If your goal is to get six-star drac, be patient. Wait until all 14 doors open. Take stock of which doors have the most tokens. You're going to get probably three gold keys throughout the uh, event. One's going to be uh, for just doing stuff. One's going to be in the shop, and then you might get a second one uh, later on. So what you can do is after you see all of the things, all of the doors, which ones have um, the most tokens, buy those with the gold keys. Use your event points to buy silver keys, and you can literally use silver keys on every single other door. So there's going to be 28 total doors. You'll be to open three of them with gold keys one of them you'll probably pick um, to open both in the normal round and the bonus round and then you'll probably pick one other door the rest of them if you play hard enough through the two weeks you can earn enough event tickets to keep buying just enough silver um, keys to open up every other single door with silver keys you'll get plenty of tokens to go around and you will end up with a six star drac now with that little rant out of the way, and that's not just to say anything specific. It's just saying if you're going to spend money on him, why not spend $100 on him rather than $150? So play it smart and do the right thing and just uh, think about it for a bit. And if you do that exact methodology and do not have enough tokens for six-star drac, then I will apologize and I will personally make up the difference. But I'm very confident that's going to be the case. All right, let's accept these tokens and take a look at this guy. 
So there's our 10 tokens. Now, I'll be honest, looking at his little hooded figure right now, I'm not thrilled about that character model. When I saw Drac the Warlord, I was a re immediately minded of uh, Drax the Destroyer, who's a guardian of the galaxy, and I thought maybe he would be this uh, tattooed badass mofo. Um, but nonetheless, um, let's have a look. So we're going to summon him first, get a look at his character model. He's a little bit of a hunchback. Uh, that's, I guess, weird. Kind of a neat little Zelda type sword. I do like that. Let's get into his character profile so we can actually. Oh, his his clip his artwork is way better than his model. So my guess is when we ascend this guy, he's gonna get that really cool ass helmet. So right now he's really I don't know, he's kind of a joke. So it's that kind of a lurching hunchback Quasimodo guy when he turns into um, the um, huge sword helmet wielding dude. That's what we're looking for. Before we get into the extensions and the costs, let's go ahead and take a look at what uh, he is. So it looks like rune loadout to start with, green, green, blue, and then yellow, and then purple. This is a typical nature rune loadout, so there's nothing special here. He is going to be uh, up there amongst the, not the most powerful, but uh, medium powerful. Because he does have a water rune and a light rune, he runs into a little bit of a roadblock <laughs> in terms of total attack. Stats wise, starts out with not a lot as far as traits go. That's pretty typical. We saw the same thing with Abigail the Brutal. She has basically nothing to begin with. He is armored. That's good. So he's going to take less damage from melee attacks. That's good for a barbarian. That's something that I would assume all barbarian, barbarians to have. Rage is a new passive for barbarians only. So we gain rage when hit by enemies and it modifies abilities. Stacks up to five times and resets in each room. This is equivalent to Lily's plant growth uh, for the most part. Stacks up to five times. This here is going to be the new mechanic uh, that we have to watch out for. So this here, I believe, is going to be not just a Drac mechanic, but a bar <coughs> excuse me, a barbarian mechanic. <clears throat> so we want to pay close attention to this and see what it's going to do for us in the long run. It's going to uh, modify abilities. That's the big thing. So it's likely going to maybe go up and down similar to Gortusk's uh, momentum. Um, we'll see how that uh, plays out. Um, we can't really look at his base stats right now. These mean absolutely nothing. Uh, when we get him up to six star, then we can see what his base attack and defense are and how he um, stacks up. I will say this though. At... Um, um, 10 tokens, 1 star. He has a 600 attack. Um, my, excuse me. My guess is he's going to be pretty attack heavy in the long run. <coughs> Alright, so tier 1 abilities. Let's take a look at what he's got. Since he doesn't have any traits, let's go into the abilities. We have Rage Swing, which is his basic attack. I doubt there's anything specific on here. So, basic melee attack on target, rage causes additional strikes on random target. What I believe this is, is as you gain stacks of rage, if you have two stacks of rage, you're going to get um, either two additional um, two additional attacks, or you get two total attacks. Either way, you're going to get bonus attacks. So when you get up to five stacks of rage, if he's going to do five basic attacks on every attack, that puts him far and above uh, better than uh, Grognog, and also better than... Um, uh, General Krex's third ability. This here, I think, if you pump out a serious attack-based uh, Drac, this is going to be huge, especially for navigating some of those beast teams, get some of those uh, extra attacks on there. Also, if you consider the um, some of the runes that we have that only trigger on basic attacks, those ultra runes, this is going to be a good chance to start proccing some of those things like disease touch, um, fire touch, and um, um, shock touch, or whatever the yellow one is. Pillage, Me <laughs> melee attack on, let's see, it's just a regular basic melee attack and then all allies attack random enemies with a chance to steal buffs on hit. So rage increases the number of buffs stolen. Huh. It's interesting that this came out like this because I literally just posted a, a hero suggestion on the, the forum today that has a similar thing where um, people attack random enemies and steal their buffs. So I guess it must have been in a, uh, a sort of a 
predictive state or whatever. But this is actually cool because it doesn't say uh, barbarian allies. Uh, we see a lot of these things with teams where all beasts will do this or all um, other people, constructs will do this or flying will do this. This actually makes Drac a very good team player for any team because any ally will attack a random enemy. <laughs> And so when we do these extra basic attacks, anybody that has an epic, you have a chance for those epics to probably proc. That's what I'm assuming. Uh, so if you put them on there with somebody who has a nice room clearing epic like uh, Torchy, Shadowblade, Bulbus, Grognog, etc., um, those are going to be some really nice ones um, to get those extra bonus hits. All right, so your first big question then is how much does it cost to ascend this guy? Is he going to go the way of um, one of the cheaper heroes, or is he going to go the way of Ember Sanguine and be the most uh, expensive ever? First Ascension has, oh, the dreaded Bushido Evil. You guys are going to love this one. Nobody likes the Bushido, and we need four of them. Uh, I do apologize for that. I know the struggle for uh, mid-tier players who are looking for Bushidos. It is not fun. Um, other than that, we just have four Celestials, and then a sizable number of Monarchs. We need 60 total Monarchs. That's a little bit on the high side, um, but I do think this guy is going to be a really solid hero, so um, it may be time to bust out the um, Tower of Ponage Shop, start cashing in some things, find these uh, extra Evos any way you can get them, uh, start upcrafting if you have to. So we are going to check out his character model then as he ascends, see if he gets the cool artwork. He got some shoulder pads and his sword got a little bit bigger, but that is about it. Maybe his mustache got darker, I can't really tell, but nothing really changed too much. He did get a, uh, a Chewbacca type bandolier across his uh, shoulder. I think that wasn't there before, um, but he's still pretty basic at this point. So yes, that is awesome. We're now going to check out his trait page. He gained this one here, which is You Dare Challenge Me. Immune to taunt and provoke, that is really helpful. And then boosted damage versus taunting enemies. That's actually doubly awesome. We don't see too many people with the challenge accepted trait these days where they get double damage versus taunting. Uh, I think if we had that more, it would be um, you know pretty helpful against some of those beast teams that have uh, auto taunt on Pygneus and then Leo taunts and then you can never get by it. This here I think is awesome that he's immune to taunt. That's going to basically let you control the flow of the attack um, phase and basically ignore some of these things. Or just just put the hurt on an actual taunting enemy. Remember, because he's green, uh, he's going to throw extra damage at somebody like Gortusk, even though he's not going to do uh, tons of damage because when Gortusk is taunting, he's already got a high defense. Um, clearly, Agnon was the counter to Gortusk. So this guy is not the counter to Gortusk, in my opinion. Um, but boosted damage versus taunting enemies, this is almost certainly going to be guaranteed to be a times two damage. I don't think it's going to be based off of uh, anything like... Um, um, the rage per se. That being said, rage does modify the base attack, remember. Base attack does extra ones based on number of rage. So if you are going to do two times damage to um, a taunting enemy and you have a bunch of attacks going in, you might be able to clear out a taunter pretty damn quick. I think that's going to be a, a fun one to play with. Uh, if we get to the point where Drac gets an epic and we start getting attack after attack after attack and then maybe one of them triggers an epic, uh, it's going to be a pretty fun time, I think. Uh, all right, his next ability that he unlocked is the Wounding Cleave. I've said uh, a bunch of times before, I think we need more heroes with wound. I think it's a really cool uh, ability because it's one of those ones where people aren't be able to heal through it and uh, it can really only be purged by a couple of the uh, the cleansers. So I think it's a great uh, debuff to throw out there amongst the best of the debuffs because it does do pretty good de uh, damage. So armor piercing, uh, there's always some question in terms of what armor piercing actually means. Does that mean that it lowers the defense? Not usually. Typically armor piercing means it ignores armor. Um, we'll have to take a look at that when we actually see the attacks take place. Uh, I'm not going to do really any attacks tonight to, to see that, but keep your eyes uh, on that. Um, armor piercing could mean one of two things. Either it ignores armor or it's going to uh, lower their defense. Um, keep in mind, defense is not armor, so the idea of lowering defense would not necessarily be armor piercing my guess it's going to ignore armor so this is the armor piercing melee physical attack on target for whatever base damage and a chance to wound again i wish we knew what the chance to wound was if it gave us a little green icon for it um, just so we could see what it actually is my guess is a small percent maybe 
10 or 15 percent something like that um, adding skill um, we're certainly not going to pump a lot of skill into this guy so um, don't worry about that too much if it wounds it wounds otherwise um we're more curious about whether or not this is going to be a potent attack so at this phase here 274 base damage is just slightly higher than 50 percent because this uh, basic attack here is going to be 50 percent of his uh, attack basically so it does a little bit better than that doesn't say anything yeah rage adds additional hits that's where you get your damage so rage adds additional hits on random enemies um, so when you get down to one left that's actually gonna be pretty good uh, with a chance to wound so um, basically we want to get his stacks of rage up which um, is gonna be the, the main thing with him so he's gonna be uh, something to behold I'm curious uh, because he's a nature hero if he will be added to the very 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 short list of people that could one-shot furnace I doubt he'll be able to put out enough damage to, to kill Furnace because of the elemental disadvantage, but um, that will be pretty uh, pretty amazing. Okay, so now the second ascension. That's usually when things get a little bit pricey. Um, I actually have it here. I can see the, the little icon. So 6, 8, and 4. We need 18 Celestial Evos and another bunch of uh, Monarchs. So this is a rather pricey one, I can tell. Uh, just by looking at it, we had um, 6 and 8 is 14, and then 4 is 18, and then 4 from the previous round is 22. Uh, I do have a cheat sheet from many, many, many months ago. 22 as far as Celestial Evos. Um, maybe I don't actually have it on here. No, I don't. Sorry. Uh, I thought I did, but I have it on a spreadsheet somewhere. But 22 Celestial Evos is higher than the norm. Um, so he is a little bit on the pricier side to ascend. So uh, I can see from his little portrait that he's going to get the cool um, upgrade to his helmet. That's what we really want. Now we're talking. This is a hero that you can get behind, and somebody that uh, this is somebody you want to spend money on. Because this guy looks, um, like I said, he is a, a bamf, if you will, badass mofo. Um, so I'm definitely liking that character model very, very much. So I think it would have been way cooler if he was a dual wielder. Uh, he would remind. He reminds me of the the first boss in the the Ninja Gaiden game. That's basically what he looks like. I think a dual wheel would have been awesome though, um, but maybe next time. So additional um, traits. Now that we picked up, we picked up Rage Revenge. So there's a chance to revenge attacks, gain number of hits per stack of Rage. So this isn't just a revenge. This is a a serious revenge. So after a couple of turns, when the Rage goes up. You tag this guy and he's coming back at you full force. So if he's on PvP defense, do not attack him with Water Hero. You're asking for a death sentence there. Uh, so that's, um, that's going to be pretty potent. Next up is Indomitable Will. All Barbarian allies gain 15% damage reduction per stack of Rage. Uh, this will... It says all barbarian allies, but this will almost certainly apply to him as well uh, because he is a barbarian. It doesn't have to be an ally per se. He is one, so he counts as an ally to himself. Um, so he's going to have high attack to start with, and then once he gets rage, he's basically a polar opposite of Gortas. Gortas starts out with high defense, and then as he uh, gets beat up on, he gets uh, attack a little bit. Um, I guess it's not polar opposite, but because... Um, Drac is going to increase damage with more hits as well. Um, but he's going to get some serious uh, protection along the way as well. So that's um, very, very helpful. I don't know that we're going to be rolling out any Barbarian teams in PvP uh, um, offense or defense. So just having this by himself and not requiring any other Barbarians is actually um, very, very helpful. So in PvE, because we don't have a Barbarian healer, uh, I haven't looked at the other three yet. Maybe Ingus is going to have some healing abilities. I don't know. Um, but because we don't have a healer, I don't think any of these are going to be an auto-run team or anything like that. But uh, we could certainly build a three, uh, three Barbarian team and pair with Solaris as a healer. Um, but I don't think that's going to be the focus at this point. But this uh, damage reduction, um, I'll just do the math for you. 15 times 5 is... Anybody? 75. So we're going to get 75% damage reduction um, per stack of rage. If we throw on uh, his one blue rune, if we take uh, a nice damage reduction blue rune, he's going to be um, pretty formidable once he gets those stacks. That's a big deal. 
Last one is Unbridled Rage. Allied Barbarians are immune to fear, and if they would die, ignores death for a turn. Unbridled Rage happens once per dungeon, not once per room. This is akin to uh, Ice Bloom's um, effect. If she would die, basically saves him, gives him one health. I don't know what the um, ignores death for a turn is. So there's two schools of thought. One, it's like Ice Bloom where another hit will take him down. Or two, it's like uh, Hagram when he's using his Dwarven Fury where once he gets down to death, he's just immune to damage for the rest of the turn. Um, so this is a pretty cool effect. It's basically going to prevent him from being one shot in the first round, which uh, we all like to prevent those one shots. And to be honest, it's going to prevent um, um, a horrible gank death early on in the in the fights as well. So if Shade comes after this guy and tries to gank him, you're safe for the entire turn. You're going to be allowed to get off at least one attack. That is uh, pretty potent. So is that I don't know who this is meant to counter. If it's excuse me, <coughs> if he's going to be um, a counter to beast teams. Um, I think it's going to be part of it, just because he does so many attacks. Uh, once he gets some stacks up, he's um, he's going to be powerful. Um, that's for sure. So, like I said, if you're going to spend money, this this is probably a good guy to spend money on. Um, he's, he will he will get you some win streaks. I think. I don't know the teams we're going to pick yet, but he's going to get you some win streaks. His last ability challenge sounds like a taunt to me. Challenges target enemy. Target enemy attacks, and then this hero attacks for 590. Uh, that 590 was basically 100% of his attack. Nope, a little bit more. Not quite, I guess. So once we actually upgrade him, maybe see what those total values were. 590 base damage plus damage dealt um, by enemy attack. Let's see, 590 base plus the damage dealt by enemy adds 20% more per stack. Okay. So Rage can add up to 100% additional damage. So that's a lot of damage. Remember, we can um, we can expect to add a, a good number of uh, um, attack type runes with the, um, the green, green, and purple runes. Not up there in, um, you know, the dark range, but, um, or the uh, fire range, rather. But it's going to be uh, something potent. So the interesting thing about this is that you are giving the enemy a free attack on you. I don't know if that's going to be a good thing or a bad thing. If you challenge somebody like um, Shade, for example, or Koros, that may be a bad, bad uh, option. Um, so this is going to be one that you have to use discretion on. Obviously, you don't want to use it when you have um, low health. Although, if you have high stacks of rage to start with, um, when you do this you are going to have uh, damage reduction anyway. So it may not matter anyways. You may be able to just pick anybody and um, just piss pound them into the ground. So that is our first look of um, Drac the Warlord. He is, um, <clears throat> like I said, I think he's going to be pretty uh, pretty potent in PvP. Uh, because he has a normal rune loadout, <clears throat> he is a warrior and he's armored and he gets some natural uh, abilities to uh, reduce damage. My suggestion is take your best attack runes uh, as far as the nature, nature, and uh, dark rune. Get yourself um, the uh, blessing of the seeker, and then if you have any um, nice, um, <clears throat> if you have any nice yellow runes, um, my suggestion might be um, to look for that uh, cool electric skin rune. If you do have the double attack yellow rune, that's a good one as well. And then the blue one, take your pick. My personal preference for the blue one is likely going to be the blue ultra rune, where you get the cleansing regeneration. That being said, there is one other thing that I would like to look at, because we're nearing a new event. Uh, it may not actually be up until tomorrow, if it is there, but I did want to check the green runes. There had been um, rumors that just maybe we might see... Nope, it's not there. I was thinking maybe we'd get the nature ultra rune. Uh, not there yet, at least right now. We'll check back that one tomorrow at, uh, in the afternoon. Uh, definitely do that to check to see if there's any really cool um, touch runes out here. Like uh, It's likely going to be a, a poison touch um, when that actually does release. But <clears throat> that is, um, like I said, our first look at um, Drac the Warlord. I think he's going to be um, a real superstar hero. I really do. Um, and the fact that we're doing uh, a Winterfest type of uh, event, 
Um, there's going to be lots of hero tokens available. My suggestion, if you're not planning on spending any money, uh, still do what I told you. Be very, very cautious about just randomly opening doors. You're going to be uh, deceived a little bit because what's going to happen is some of the doors are going to have a really, really kick-ass rune in it, and you're going to have uh, hardly any, um, if sometimes no tokens at all. So it's a balancing act. If your goal is to get drag tokens, don't uh, cheat yourself by going after a door that has a really awesome rune. Um, you're always going to be able to get runes, but you're not going to be able to get these tokens this quickly um, um, yet. So the other thing is spend your event tickets um, slowly and steadily on silver keys. The biggest um, waste you could do is if you finish the event with additional keys, with the exception of bronze keys. Do not have leftover silver keys. So just because you have... 200,000 event tickets do not spend them all on silver keys at once so take your time buy the first gold key when it comes out get the gold key as a quest bonus get the third gold key whenever it comes out and only buy silver keys um, as you need them so that when you get to the very end you have one silver key left to open the final door uh, out of the 28 of them so play it smart and maximize the number of tokens you get and uh, you'll have a very successful event that being said you will have to do some grinding you're gonna have to do lots of quests to get the event tickets but uh, if you really want this guy commit to the event do the uh, do the quest get the tickets and uh, have a little fun with it. it might seem a little bit grindy but you have uh, two whole weeks to do it and there's likely gonna be a guild component that gives you a really killer rune to start with so um, don't worry about trying to find that perfect rune in the doors unless it's a rune that we've absolutely never seen before uh, something that um, offers I don't know. We, we already have the energy runes. We already have buff steel and we already have extra basic attacks. So I don't know what's out there that could be a rune that we've never seen before. That is an absolute must have. Um, so use discretion. And uh, like I said, let the doors open before you just go committing. Everybody posts the doors onto the forums anyways. You can easily see what's in each door when you get to day 14 and maximize your keys uh, as best as possible. So with that said, we're going to wrap things up. Hopefully you guys have a successful event. I don't know what it's going to be called yet. We'll just call it the Drac event for now. But uh, I will be looking at uh, PvP for him probably in a couple of weeks. It may not be until I get him up to four or possibly five star. I do have uh, other stuff for work. I'm going to be on the road next week. Um, my plan for next week is since I'm not going to be able to do typical recording, if anybody is stuck uh, to the end of this recording here, uh, I may just go um, live next week from my hotel room and cover uh, the remaining barbarians. Uh, obviously, you'll be able to look over the barbarians themselves. My guess is all of them are going to have that rage trait, but uh, what else have been reworked? A lot of people are looking at uh, Baylog for the Baylog uh, update. I don't really care so much about it. It's unlikely that it's going to be anything that great. But I think I will possibly go live and, and talk about the three barbarians to see what it looks like. Uh, if not, um, we'll just resume regular videos once I get back from my, um, my business trip. So... Um, with that, we're going to wrap things up here. We're basically at a half hour, so uh, if you stuck it out this long, I thank you for listening, and uh, we will talk again soon, and hopefully um, we have a, a good time with this one. Uh, otherwise, thanks for watching, and we'll uh, catch you next time. Thank you so much for watching this video and supporting my channel. If you like this video, please show your continued support by hitting that like button, and be sure to check out both my YouTube channels for new content all the time. And always remember, peace is a lie. There's only passion. We'll see you next time.